Welcome back to The Defiant Explains, our comprehensive tutorial videos which dive deep into DeFi projects and show you how to navigate them with a step-by-step -step guide. Today's video was sponsored by Gains Network, but it was researched and created in-house by the Defiant team while adhering to our standards of objectivity. Today, we're kicking things off with an exciting but risky perpetual futures example. We'll then explore the Gains Network before doing an actual walkthrough and placing some trades. So stick around for some useful tips and tricks on how to generate returns, which you can start using right away. So what is Gains Network? The FTX crash left a massive void in the derivatives trading market with many retailers searching for a trustworthy platform that's not based on fraudulent schemes. Fortunately, the answer may lie in decentralized networks that prioritize self-custody. And one such platform is the GAINS network. And before we jump into the platform itself, we should know how exactly the derivatives market can be beneficial to us as traders. So why would I want to trade derivatives in the first place? Well, economies are generally driven by production and trade, but both are layered with heavy doses of speculation and broadly speaking, the higher the risk, the higher the potential returns. Among the more popular speculative instruments is perpetual futures. These are contracts that allow traders to speculate on price movements of an underlying asset, but without owning the asset itself. So perpetual futures are a type of derivative and they're among the highest risk instruments available. They're typically used by experienced traders and professionals, but naturally, retail investors with a higher risk tolerance are also known to dabble in derivatives. So now that we're armed with the knowledge of what a derivative is, let's figure out what exactly perpetual futures are. Perpetual futures are settled in cash instead of delivering the underlying asset. That means the trades don't result in delivery of assets upon contract maturity. Traders can simply roll over their contracts with cash or stable coins. And finally, where does the perpetual come into play? Whether you bet on the price movement to go up or down, these futures contracts have no expiry date. This means that you can hold your position as long as you're able to maintain the required margin and rollover fees. Although a word of caution, as much as the perpetual element of these derivatives offer flexibility, the fees associated with holding the position open for a prolonged period often makes this a suboptimal strategy. So now that we've cleared up the basics on perpetual futures, the most important question is which trading platform to pick. In the wake of the failure of the crypto exchange FTX last year, investors lost confidence in centralized platforms. Instead, as I mentioned earlier, people are now seeking decentralized protocols which allow trustless access to users who have their own self-custodial wallets. In the last year, Gains Network's user count has surged from 800 to a whopping 10,000 traders. The trading platform is available on Ethereum's top scaling networks, Arbitrum and Polygon, with negligible gas fees. Arbitrum, as many of you will already know, is steadily becoming Ethereum's scalability solution of choice for veteran traders. And thanks to these drivers, Gtrade has already settled over 700,000 trades. But how exactly does a decentralized protocol handle derivatives trading and wouldn't you need a centralized exchange with deep liquidity like Binance. Well, the GAINS network does have a trick up its sleeve that makes even 1,000 times leverage possible, not only for crypto tokens, but also for certain stocks, commodities, indices, and even Forex pairs. The demand for either asset class shifts, but is still mainly crypto-centered as shown in this chart here. As with any decentralized application or dApp, you can access Gtrade with a self-custodial wallet such as Metamask, and you can do so without having to sign up. But before we get into opening your first perpetual futures trade, let's figure out how exactly Gtrade maintains liquidity. First, you should keep in mind that leverage trading is a high-risk, potentially high-reward venture. Case in point, if we take a look at Gtrade's profit versus loss statistics, we'll see that the PNL of closed positions is cumulatively in the negative range at nearly $7 million. And just like a traditional exchange, Gtrade is built with an assumption that most traders lose money on average. In turn, the losers fill the protocol's liquidity coffers, specifically by depositing DAI stablecoin as collateral for investment positions. This is Gtrade's first line of defense against liquidation when margin called. But what happens when traders have positive PNL in excess of their collateral? This is when the second line of defense kicks in, an over-collateralized layer in the form of a $5 million liquidity pool owned by the protocol itself. Lastly, 
G-Trade has a third line of liquidation defense called the G-Dai Vault. In this liquidity pool, anyone can deposit Dai stablecoins as counterparty balance. In exchange, they receive a cut of the trading fees. Incentivized by these yields, liquidity providers bolster the protocol's liquidity. Trading fees organically incentivize liquidity providers as their yield fluctuates based on trading demand. Currently, the vault pays 20% annual percentage yield or APY while holding over $30 million worth of DAI stablecoins. And if we take into account Polygon and Arbitrum, that figure is at $45 million. And although in the double digit range, the APY comes from trading fees. Gains Network also has its own GNS token that allows users to earn a share of protocol revenue. Whenever you deposit DAI in the vault, you will receive a liquid GDAI ERC20 token, which represents your ownership of the stake. Okay, so there are nice returns to be generated. And the next logical question is, how does one go about withdrawing? The withdrawal system consists of epochs. Within the first two days of each epoch, you can withdraw your funds. However, there is a time lock between the withdrawal request and execution. Now this time lock delay is dependent on the collateralization ratio of the vault itself. And you can see these figures on screen right now. For instance, if the vault is 120% or more collateralized, there is a one epoch time lock of three days. You can see the rest on screen. The purpose of the time lock is to cover for leveraged trades. With high risk, high reward in mind, let's get started on your first G-Trade. Gains Network has two types of access, so let me explain them both quickly before diving in and using them. The regular access method lets you connect a wallet and select the network either Arbitrum or Polygon. And if, for example, you have MetaMask, the wallet would automatically pick the network settings. The second access type enables G-Trade's very own one-click trading or 1CT wallet. Now this is a super convenient function which allows traders to create a proxy wallet to cover the gas fees. So the idea is that traders no longer have to approve trades on MetaMask, allowing them to trade seamlessly as if they were on a centralized exchange. One-click trading actually uses two mechanisms to provide the convenience that I just mentioned. You have the 1CT wallet, and secondly, you have trade delegation. So let's start with the 1CT wallet. Just like MetaMask, the G-Trade website encrypts and stores key material, meaning 1CT is a self-custodial wallet, and you can hold your private keys if you choose to export them. Now, the most convenient way to fund a wallet would be to connect an externally owned account, or EOA, to submit transactions, and essentially this means you're granting the 1CT wallet permission to trade funds on your behalf. Second, we have trade delegation. This feature allows you to delegate trading to another externally owned account. The beautiful part of this feature is that you only need to have enough funds to cover gas in your delegation wallet, as the collateral and PNL are actually tied to the trader address. So your 1CT wallet comes into play as a delegation wallet. And as the name suggests, it's a type of wallet that allows you to delegate crypto funds to a third party for trading purposes. And in this case, that's the Gains Network. Given that your 1CT wallet is tied to your original wallet address, which holds your collateral and your profit and loss balance, the 1CT wallet only needs gas funds for submitting transactions. This way, you can engage in a more seamless trading experience while still maintaining full control over your funds. So let's go to gains.trade slash trading to get started. And as soon as we scroll down, we notice that what they're really all about here is optimizing the trading experience. They're talking about making it faster and cheaper. And there's also a mention of mitigating some of the risks associated with leverage trading. And that's something we'll get back to right after we start placing some trades. So I'll scroll back up and I'll click on the start trading button. And the next step is of course to connect your MetaMask wallet. So the Dex conveniently tells me that I'm on the wrong network and we can go ahead and click that button and change over to the Arbitrum network to make sure we're in the right place. I approve this transaction through MetaMask. Now from here, I'm gonna go straight into the one-click trading option because I don't really wanna be dealing with multiple MetaMask pop-ups for every single trade. So if I activate the one-click trading wallet, it prompts me to create a pin. So I've entered my pin, I'm signing the transaction on MetaMask to essentially acknowledge that this is indeed my pin code. Next, I have to approve the 1CT wallet and give it the authority to submit transactions without me having to manually accept each transaction inside MetaMask. And for this, I have to pay a tiny amount of gas to complete. 
And we're ready to fund our one-click trading wallet already, and we really don't need much gas on Arbitrum. It's very cheap because it's a layer two network, and the one CT wallet only really needs these funds for gas. So I'll go ahead and put something like $25 worth, which is a very, very small amount in ETH. And we get the confirmation message from MetaMask and we're ready to start trading. So with wallet funding out of the way, how do you actually open your first G-Trade position? The first thing you'll notice is that G-Trade has all these options available at a glance. And the major one being that you're betting on a token appreciation so long, or you're betting on the token depreciating in value or short. For example, let's take Cardano as the perpetual futures target. The Cardano blockchain's native currency is ADA, and the token trading pair will be ADA slash USD, which you can manually search for by typing in the first few letters over in this top-hand corner. I've already done so, and I'll select it so it's there and it's ready to go. Now, once we've selected the trading pair, we have to also decide on the trading position. Are we going long or are we shorting it? After that, we can select the leverage amount. Now, leverage options do range from 2x all the way to 150x. And today we're trading on Arbitrum. The minimum position size on Arbitrum is 7,500 DAI, which is calculated by your collateral times the leverage that you choose to use. So if I use 50 DAI as collateral, I'll need 150x leverage to get there or I can open a position with 150 DAI as collateral and use only 50x leverage. And both of these options will get me to the 7,500 DAI threshold. With position type and size set, you have three conditions under which the position is closed. First, we can set a limit order, which will set the specific price at which to buy or sell order. For example, if you believe order will go up to $0.5 and you want to buy it, you would set that limit. Second, we have a stop loss, which automatically sells ADA when it reaches a specific price point in order to limit losses. For example, if you bought ADA at 35 cents, but you set a stop loss order at 30 cents, your ADA will be auto sold when its price drops under 30 cents. Then we have the take profit order, which automatically sells Cardano when it reaches the price point that we've set. So for the sake of today's video, let's assume that I think Cardano needs to cool off a bit and find some new support. So I'm going to short it. I click on short on the top right hand corner of the screen and I'll select 50x leverage for demo purposes. And that means to get to the threshold we need of 7,500 DAI, we need 150 DAI as collateral. I manually enter both of these numbers. And once I've done so, I'll indicate a stop loss of around 25% to avoid getting liquidated in the event of a rapid price increase. So my stop loss is now at 0.368 cents and my take profit is at 100% or 0.359 cents. And if I wanna take profit at 100%, basically what that means is I'll walk away with 150 die in profit assuming that my price target is hit. My position is placed and I can see where I entered the position, I can see my take profit and I can see my liquidate position as well, all on the screen. Now, the convenient layout which displays all of the key information in one place is worth noting here. And it means that I don't have to keep interacting with MetaMask pop-ups like some of the other DEXs. But beyond that, the charting here, which is powered by TradingView, also allows me to actually see all the tools and technical analysis all in the same place. So we've placed a limit order going short and let's now try to go long using a market order to see just how quickly Gains Network will execute that. As I mentioned earlier, Gains Network will allow me to open positions on cryptos, stocks, forex, and even commodities like gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that out going long on SPY. So I've clicked on pairs and I've typed in SPY and it's giving me this position. And I'm gonna select 350 DAI as my collateral this time. My leverage is gonna be 35X because I have to get to the 12,000 die threshold to actually open the position. Um, this is a high risk position, so I'm gonna have a tight stop loss. 
I will manually enter it, uh, let's say 395, 396. And my take profit is indicated at 25%. So I stand to walk away with 87 and a half die in profits. And if I lose, I lose 33 die. Uh, you also have to factor in the 6.1 die in trading fees for this position as well. So the parameters are set, my stop loss is there, my liquidation price is displayed on screen and I'm going to click the market long. The order is initiated and almost instantaneously the position is open. Now once again I have the convenience of seeing all the most relevant information right here at the bottom corner of my screen or I can also refer to the price chart for the key information as well. And once I'm in this position I can exit it with ease by just clicking on the graph or if I choose to I can also close it manually myself. So let's assume the position or the trade rather is going against me. I can click right there. and the transaction is closed that quickly. So for our final trade, I'm gonna short an entirely different asset class and we're gonna go for stocks this time. Uh, I'm gonna type in Tesla over here in the top left corner. There we have it. So the idea here is to simulate a scalping situation where for example, the RSI might be in the overbought territory and I wanna quickly get in and out of a trade. So let me go to a different time frame and let's also add an indicator. Once my parameters are selected, all I have to do is press the market short button right here. And just like that, it should open the second trade going short. There we go. Almost instantly I'm in the position and I can see all the key information here on the bottom right corner or as I mentioned on the trading screen itself. Now it seems that the trade is going against us. So assume that the scalp isn't working for me and I wanna exit the position as quickly as possible. I have the option of closing it right here or closing it on the trading screen as well. So the trade's gone against me, my scalp hasn't worked and for the purpose of the demo, I'll close this position as well. I click the close button, I wait for about a second and my position is closed. My stop loss wasn't triggered. So there we have it. G-Trade is a liquidity efficient DeFi trading platform which allows me to use leverage with low fees and without the hassle of a million MetaMask pop-ups. I can actually trade with leverage up to 150x on crypto, 50x on stocks, 35x on indices and a whopping 1000x on Forex. And how does Gains Network know the accurate price of any given token? We're gonna to start with an analogy borrowed from ancient Greek mythology, where an oracle was an intermediary between humans and the gods. Applying this to the crypto space, oracle networks are intermediary systems that feed off-chain data to on-chain smart contracts. This is how dApps gain their capacity to execute the logic based on real-world data. Typically, this real-world data is the price of cryptocurrencies. The most popular such Oracle network is Chainlink or Link, which uses a decentralized verification system to make sure the data is correct. In contrast, Gains Network uses its own customized Chainlink Oracle to guarantee price accuracy. Now, Gains was initially launched on the Polygon blockchain, but we really saw the impressive uptick that we did in user count around December and into the new year when Gains deployed on Arbitrum which as we know is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, which proved to be the catalyst for Gaines's recent growth. Isan Baidani, a Gaines contributor said that the protocol's Oracle network also played a significant role in the recent momentum. The project uses customized Chainlink oracles, which provide pricing data for on and off chain assets. And you might be wondering why is price accuracy important? Well, when traders rely on rapid decision-making to ensure gains or to avoid losses, they've got to be confident that the Oracle feeding is flawless. But sometimes we get what's called a scam wick. Now wicks are there to show the range of price in a particular time period. But a scam wick happens when a cryptocurrency's price is manipulated to create the illusion of market activity. You'll typically see this when whales place large volume orders that are drastically above or below the asset's current market price. Consequently, this manifests as a scam wick to trigger stop losses or artificially drive up the price, enabling the whale to sell at this higher price. G-Trade's customized Chainlink Oracle is specifically tuned to filter scam wicks to prevent that form of market manipulation. So to wrap it all up, the Gains Network has built a resilient DeFi product with a wide variety of trading pairs 
and they've made it easy to use for practically anyone trading the price of crypto, forex, stocks, and even commodities. The most convenient aspect of what we've discovered today is likely the one-click trading wallet, which allows users to create a proxy wallet with gas, so you don't have to keep approving transactions through the MetaMask wallet over and over again. In that sense, using Gtrade emulates the experience of trading on a centralized exchange. I hope this video has informed you enough about the GAINS network, but of course, do let me know in the comments if you have any specific features you'd like me to explore further, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you